Let me also start by thanking um, Gediminas for bringing together this wonderful conference with all these wonderful people in this wonderful city. I enjoyed very much. And um, I will talk about Floquet engineering of open quantum systems. And what we have in mind is systems which are given by a cloud of matter. Um, and this cloud of matter is in some structured environment. And so this cloud of matter could be ultra-cold atoms in optical lattices, or it could be um, photons, microwave photons, and superconducting circuits. These are the two examples I will address. And um, now we drive the system out of equilibrium by two things. The first thing is that we um, periodically modulate some external fields which drive the system. And second, um, we put it into a thermal environment or some engineered environment so that it approaches a non-equilibrium steady state. And um, let me give a very general motivation for doing something like this. So um, if you're in equilibrium, of course, um, you know that you can use statistical mechanics and um, you know how to compute um, expectation values uh, and the properties of a system. And this can still be very difficult, but at least it's a, a, a very generic concept that you can use. Um, if you drive your system away from equilibrium, you do not have this concept anymore, not such a universal concept. And this is um, often a challenge because you have to um, maybe solve equations of motions and look where the system goes. Um, but it is also an opportunity um, to control the system beyond the actually very strict constraints of thermal equilibrium where your state is just determined by the temperature or the chemical potential of the bath. But, um, by sort of going beyond these constraints, you might achieve interesting properties of your system, which you wouldn't be able to get um, in equilibrium. So this is sort of a very general motivation. Um, let me now sort of briefly um, remind you of Floquet systems and Floquet engineering um, without an external bath, so in an isolated system. So um, we consider a system which is um, driven periodically in time with some period T. Uh, and it is described by a time periodic Hamiltonian. And um, as a consequence of this discrete translation invariance in time, um, it possesses states uh, which are called Floquet states. And they consist of um, a time periodic Floquet mode. And this Floquet mode um, uh, uh, is very similar to the modes of um, uh, stationary states of non-driven systems, except for the fact that it is time periodic and not a constant in time. And then we have a quasi-energy, uh, which is a real number which um, dictates uh, uh, with which speed um, a linear phase of this state evolves in time. And now um, you can um, construct a time-independent Floquet Hamiltonian, which we saw already in Flo's talk um, just uh, before lunch. And um, this uh, time-dependent Floquet Hamiltonian is constructed such that it describes the time evolution of the system um, in stroboscopic steps of the driving amplitude. So if you just look at a driving period, if you just look at stroboscopically at the system at integer multiples of capital T, um, it will look as if the dynamics was generated by this time-independent um, Floquet Hamiltonian. And, um, this now looks very promising so that you can say, now I can engineer my system and control just HF according to my needs by driving the system in a particular fashion. Um, but it's not quite that simple um, if we are in a many-body system. And um, the reason is um, the following. So if we um, have a look at these quasi-energies, um, we notice that different from energies, they are only determined up to integer multiples of h bar omega. So if we redefine it by adding an integer m of h bar omega, we can also redefine the Floquet mode. And this is, again, a perfectly legal decomposition of this state into a periodic part and a part described by a quasi-energy. And this means that quasi-energies are just determined up to integer multiples of h bar omega. And this describes something which we all ver know very well, namely resonant coupling and the possibility of resonant coupling, for instance. So if we have, let's say, two unperturbed states of an undriven system and we couple them uh, and we uh, switch on some time periodic perturbation which is resonant with the frequency resonant to this energy difference, these two states appear to be degenerate. So a tiny um, perturbation can already hybridize these states. And as a consequence, these Floquet states um, are 
uh, superpositions of states having very different energies. And these resonances, if we go to a many-body problem, are ubiquitous. And that means um, these many-body Floquet states are actually superpositions of states having very different energy. And as a consequence, um, they, uh, this Floquet Hamiltonian actually describes heating unlike static Hamiltonians. And this is uh, something which has been discussed um, a lot in the last years. One way of viewing this is also that you think about the Floquet system as undergoing eigenstate thermalization without energy conservation. This was pointed out by people like Roderich Mössner, uh, um, uh, uh, Achilleas Lazaridis and, and, and others. And um, now um, this looks very bad. However, you can still use these techniques to control the system. Namely, um, these resonant processes might happen on a very long time scale. And in this case, on shorter times, you might describe the evolution of the system with some effective Hamiltonian, um, which looks like a regular many-body Hamiltonian and not describing this sort of heating processes. And this works on some finite time um, before some heating time when these resonant processes which spoil sort of the physics described by this effective Hamiltonian kick in. And um, one very important example which, for which this has been used in recent years is the realization of artificial magnetic fields um, in, for instance, in square lattices or in hexagonal lattices. And there have been experiments in quantum gases uh, in the group of Monika Eidelsburg, Emanuel Bloch, Christoph Weitenberg, Klaus Sengstock, Tilman Esslinger, and so on. And you can, in particular, engineer, for instance, topological insulators and also phases of matter which you wouldn't be able to engineer without driving. But I don't want to go too much into detail here. Now I want to switch to the case of the open system. And let me just motivate why this is interesting. There's three reasons. The first reason is that in an experimental platform which you're working in, it might just be the experimental reality that you have an open system. Quantum gases can be, to a high degree, isolated from their environment, but it's not always possible in any platform. So this is sometimes just an experimental reality you have to deal with. Um, second, you see this heating here. Um, you might... Um, wonder if it's possible to stabilize, let's say, a low temperature state of this effective Hamiltonian um, as a steady state uh, of the dynamics so that this heating is suppressed by the, uh, 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 by the environment. So this is a second motivation. And the third motivation is that you might also use this for a completely different type of Floquet engineering where you want to engineer um, some interesting non-equilibrium steady state into which the system runs, which is not just a, a low temperature state of H effective, but something completely different, uh, which is maybe interesting for some other reason. So let us now have a look at these um, open-driven uh, uh, quantum systems. Um, and uh, they are described um, by um, uh, time-periodic Hamiltonian and uh, describing the system which is driven, which is coupled to some bath. And, and we will assume some uh, collection of harmonic oscillators and where you have a coupling between system and bath. Um, in the uh, limit of weak system bath coupling, you can generalize Born-Markov theory to the case of Floquet systems, and you can derive um, a master equation uh, which looks like um, which looks like has this typical um, form. So you have um, a coherent part describing um, the coherent evolution with the Hamiltonian of the system, maybe also some lamp shift, um, and then you have a dissipator which describes processes which um, are not just given by unitary evolution of the state, but um, but dissipative processes. And now let us focus for simplicity, um, both for us, it's easier to calculate, and also conceptually for you, it's easier to present. Um, to the limit of ultra-weak coupling, so that the coupling to the bath is the smallest energy scale, even smaller than the level splitting in the system. This might be a really strong assumption, and uh, it's not always given, and you can also go beyond this, but let's assume it nevertheless. Um, then you, the system approaches a steady state, the form of which we know already. Um, it is diagonal with respect to the Floquet states, um, with some probabilities uh, uh, sort of weighting the different Floquet states. So it is time periodic. So it's a quasi steady state in that sense. And why is this so? Of course, if this term here goes to zero, the state has to be an eigenstate of the first term. And this is the most general eigenstate, or no, sorry, not eigenstate, steady state of um, the first term with respect to the Hamiltonian. 
Um, now, the dissipation is still um, important here because, first of all, um, this is a mixed state with a finite entropy, so in order to reach this state, you need the dissipation. Second, um, these probabilities which appear here uh, have to be determined, and they are determined by dissipative processes. Namely, um, you will can derive a master equation um, for these probabilities, um, and you find some golden rule type rates that describe processes for quantum jumps between state M and state N. Um, now, um, how do these steady states look like? Um, we have to look at the rates, and the rates um, have a specific structure. So they are a sum over processes where the bath energy change is inverse to the quasi energy change plus integer multiples of h bar omega. And this means that um, you can have the same transition between two Floquet states um, while going up in energy in the bath or going down in energy in the bath. So that means um, the notion of high energy or low energy is really lost in these Floquet systems, and this tells you that this is a non-equilibrium process. And as a result, these rates do not obey a condition like this, which equilibrium rates would fulfill with respect to the energy. So the, the ratio between one, the rate and its backward rate is not just given by such an exponential factor depending on the inverse temperature and the quasi-energy difference. And this is different um, from equilibrium processes. So if you have just an undriven system and weak contact with the bath, you have this. And as a result, you find um, that your steady state is just the Gibbs state, just depending via the temperature or the inverse temperature beta on the environment. And this state, if you plug it into this um, Pauli master equation, you see it solves this equation term by term. So every individual term vanishes. And that means these terms describe the net probability flux from a state M to a state N. And so the net probability flux between each individual um, eigenstate of the system vanishes. And this is what we know as detailed balance. And this is the equilibrium situation. Now, if we go away from equilibrium, um, this is not the case anymore. So these probability distributions depend on all the details of these rates, not just on the temperature. And you have a finite probability flux in the steady state. So it's, this is why it's not an equilibrium state anymore, but a non-equilibrium steady state. So now, um, what can we do with this? Um, of course, this non-equilibrium steady state can be interesting if we engineer things right. So this offers a robust way of engineering a state. So it's like a um, dissipative Floquet engineering. Um, so the first example I want to discuss um, is work by um, uh, Francesco Petitziol, who is a postdoc uh, in Berlin with me. He's also here at the conference. And it is about cooling such Floquet systems in the sense of cooling them to, iron, to, to ground states of this effective Hamiltonian uh, by sort of adapting techniques of uh, reservoir engineering, uh, which have been applied before um, in systems of superconducting circuits, but generalizing them now to Floquet systems. And I will just give you an overview. So we have, let's say, a system described by a Hubbard model um, with some uh, attractive interactions uh, and tunneling. And um, we have bosons, which are phot microwave photons, which hop between these plaquettes. Now, the standard Floquet engine, oh, OK, so the standard reservoir engineering, you couple it to resonators. Um, and, by, and these are driven in a, in a red detuned fashion. And so I, I, will go, I will describe what happens here a bit more in detail on the next slide. And this can be achieved to, and this is enough to bring the system to its ground state. Now, for the driven system, you can drive your system in order to get some effective Hamiltonian, uh, which has these pi fluxes, or it has some fluxes, sorry, not pi fluxes, but which might have some magnetic fluxes. This is just an example which we took uh, uh, um, to demonstrate this. And now the question is, can you also reservoir engineer to the ground state of this effective Hamiltonian? And uh, the answer is yes, but it's not just that you can replace, let's say, the undriven Hamiltonian with this pi flux or this, this, this flux ladder and then apply the reservoirs, but it's a bit more complicated. So let me explain. Um, first of all, how does this reservoir engineering work? So you have, a, let's say, your spectrum of your system. You have uh, it coupled to a cavity mode uh, in the so-called dispersive regime where it's energetically offset. So there is only at, at most a little bit of virtual particle exchange. 
Uh, now you pump this, uh, this cavity mode in a retitude fashion. So whenever this mode absorbs a photon and, uh, and it decays, this, it ha this process has to borrow an energy delta from the system. And in this way, you can bring the system down to its uh, uh, low energy state, to its ground state, by sort of putting sufficiently many suitable reservoirs. And this is something which works in sort of small systems. You cannot scale it up to really very large systems. Now what happens uh, if the Floquet-driven problem? In the Floquet-driven problem, you again have very many copies of your Floquet system. Uh, they reflect the fact that you can always borrow or give away uh, energy quantum of h bar omega of the driving quanta. And now you can exactly repeat this process. The only thing you have to make sure is that um, you are not resonant modulo h bar omega with this uh, uh, resonator mode. And then you can again uh, uh, induce transitions where the energy in the system goes down or this effective energy. Um, however, they are now a sum of all these different pro uh, processes corresponding to different uh, 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 photon numbers which are given or taken away from the drive. And uh, this is something that works. So this is a system of eight um, qubits or eight uh, um, lattice sites. Uh, and you can use um, three resonators to cool it to its ground state. Um, you can also do it here for um, a, a smaller system, but with two hardcore bosons, essentially. And it also works. And in principle, you can also already for rather tiny system sizes, let's say of five times five sites, you can find already precursors of tiny little baby fractional quantum Hall states. They work exactly in this regime where you have some effective hardcore interaction induced by this, uh, 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 if you operate this thing in the, in the interaction limit where you can treat them as qubits. And so this is something that seems to be reasonable to stabilize with these type of methods. It's not so easy for us to simulate. So this is why this is the largest system I show you. And now um, let me show you also a second example, um, which uh, will also be very brief, um, which is work by Alex Schnell. He's sort of the main, um, um, did the main work on this. Um, he's also here in the audience. He's a postdoc with me in Berlin as well. And uh, also on the project where Lingna, she is also was a postdoc with me, is now professor at Hainan University and, Alec, and Artu Videra in Kaiserslautern. So for this, we consider now an ideal Bose gas. So this is 200 particles on about 50 sides in an optical lattice with hopping uh, constant J. And now we embed this system into a thermal bath given by a three-dimensional BEC. And we did really some microscopic theory to mimic this um, using a Bogolyubov approximation for the BEC and then doing all this Born-Markov theory to derive the master equation. And now this bath, it has a rather high temperature. It's 2.4 tunneling times. So since this is a 1D system, uh, it's finite still, but it's 1D, and the temperature is so high, there is no Bose condensation to be assumed of this system uh, uh, if you look at this. And so if you look at the time evolution starting from an infinite temperature state, um, you see that the system approaches a state where none of the modes, this is the occupation of the single particle eigenstates, acquires really a large uh, occupation. And the way we compute it is a method actually quite similar to the one we saw this morning uh, in the talk by uh, Jean Jewski, um, which uh, uh, here we apply to this, um, to, to this type of system um, in equilibrium and then also now in, in, in non-equilibrium. Um, if you now sort of additionally to this um, hot bath, you start driving your system locally at one lattice side, uh, with a rather large amplitude, which is equal to J, and a frequency which just lies in the middle of the bandwidth of this, this 1D model. So it's 3 eighths of the bandwidth. So it's really resonantly driving. And it's something which would sort of heat the system up, actually. You would expect to heat it up. It's not in the high frequency regime where, uh, uh, where most of this Floquet engineering works. It's really in the regime where you would heat the system up. If you then look at the occupation numbers of the single particle Floquet states, you see that there is one Floquet state which acquires a lot of occupation. So you get something like a Bose condensate. It's a finite system, so it's a precursor of a Bose condensate, but you get a very strong signature um, induced by this drive. And so the question is, how can this be? I mean, you have sort of um, a hot environment, or not hot, but not really cold. You start driving in a way which should heat the system up, and still sort of this induces Bose condensation. And there is an intuitive explanation. So when you drive locally here, um, there are some eigenmodes which you don't drive because these are the modes which have a node, sorry, which have a node um, 
which have a node uh, uh, exactly um, on the lattice side where you drive. So some of the modes really decouple from the drive. They are not driven. Um, and now you can look at the Floquet states of your system, and this is the overlap of the Floquet states, uh, of, of the eigenstates of the undriven model with the Floquet states. And you can clearly see there are these modes which have overlap uh, 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 one. So some of the Floquet states are actually the undriven eigenstates of the system which are not driven. Now um, these states have a property a little bit like scar, like quantum scars, because if you look at the energy fluctuations of these modes, all the driven modes have rather broad energy uh, uh, spectrum because they have superpositions of many energies because you drive resonantly, but these are not because they are still the undriven um, eigenstates. And now you can, dis you can sort of um, split your system up into the undriven scar-like modes and the driven modes. And these driven modes um, are the majority. They are broad in energy. Uh, and low energy modes uh, hybridize with high energy modes. So the spectrum sort of becomes narrower in a sense if you look at the average energies. This is this Floquet heating. So every mode at the bottom of the spectrum will hybridize with some mode of higher energy and the average will be higher. Um, then you have the undriven modes. They are the minority. They have sharp energies and they have an increased level spacing with respect to the original system. And now if you look at the prop what the bath does, the bath, first of all, because these are broad and energy distributes particles equally between these driven modes, because of the large lattice spacing, it efficiently transports particles down here. And since these systems, we have this Floquet heating, there is sort of, uh, on average, a rate uh, sort of going down uh, or transporting particles from this hot bath to the uh, lowest state or to this to these undriven modes, and this is like a, uh, a thermoelectric effect. So you heat the system, so there's some particle flow to the other system, which is non-driven. And all this then explains this quasi, or this um, non-equilibrium condensate in one mode, which is the lowest energy mode of the undriven modes, which has a, uh, the quasi-momentum 2 pi over L, or the wave number two, uh, 2 pi over L. And uh, this is exactly this mode, so the dots are the overlap with this modes, and this explains this type of um, non-equilibrium condensation. And um, this brings me already to my summary. So um, the first part, um, I uh, discussed um, uh, uh, cooling of Floquet engineered system in superconducting circuits. And in the second part, the stabilization of non-equilibrium condensates in a high temperature environment. Thank you. Thank you, <coughs> Thank you very much. We may have time for a question, or perhaps even two. Yes. What kind of, uh, what kind of environment are you considering specifically? So in the uh, cold atom system, we assumed that it's the 1D system is embedded in a 3D BC of weakly interacting atoms. Uh, and we took parameters from Artur Videra's experiment, and we treated it in Bogolyubov theory, and then did the usual uh, floquet born markov um, approximation. So it's a microscopically derived master equation for reasonable parameters. And in the other case, um, the bath was essentially given by these engineered reservoirs, which are leaky. Um, so it's an engineered bath given by these two or three reservoirs that we needed, or, or not reservoirs, sorry, um, resonators uh, that are used uh, to cool the system. Okay, I see no more questions, so thank you very much once more.